is tough. Would you all just stand up? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I can remember the day when it wasn't that difficult to be a Republican on that college. <laughs> Barely I can remember, but some of you probably can too. And uh, we have one candidate for office with us. Uh, Rick Krug is running for the school board here in Flagstaff, and he deserves yeah. our support. Tomorrow at 9.30, a little plug here for the Republican <laughs> Committee, 9.30, Tom Horn will be our speaker. We meet at McCoy Motors. Uh, we'll have campaign signs out so you know which building to come to. We sure like to see a nice turnout. Tom is leading eight or nine, ten points over his opponent, but this is his last visit to Flagstaff. So I hope a lot of you can, can show up and hear him. We'll put him on first. We may have Doug Ducey. He's not confirmed back for a uh, candidate for treasurer, and then we'll have a business meeting afterwards for the ones of you who don't, don't want to stay around for that. So that's tomorrow, and that's it. Now, I've been in, that, in politics. I've been in politics in Arizona for quite a while. I moved here in 1970. It was immediately a active in the, all of the campaigns, as you can imagine. I was on Barry Goldwater's staff, was on Ronald Reagan's co-chairman for the state twice, and I could go on and on and on. But I have a lot of favorite politicians, but I have one favorite politician, and that's Governor Brewer. I'm not going to waste a lot of time giving you her background. This individual is tough. She developed into one of the best governors that we've had, and she's going to continue that for four more years. So please join with me in doing two things. Welcoming her and working for her for the next 16 days. Governor Brewer. Wonderful introduction. I think I, um, that says a lot. You all know his reputation and how long he's been involved and the people that he has known. And your comments tonight were um, more than moving, to say the least. I am um, just so thrilled to be able to call you and Rosa my friend. So uh, thank you very much. Um, he's a stand-up kind of guy. He believes very strongly with what he believes in. And uh, uh, he has been there for me for many, many years. And um, I know uh, that he makes a difference in uh, politics and policy in the state of Arizona and in America. Well, I tell you, <laughs> standing up here, having served in public office for, you know, uh, about 28 years, this is a great group of Republicans yeah. here tonight. Yeah. 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 
It has been a fabulous visit since I got up here early this morning and traveled around. We went to the uh, Rural Development uh, Organization and had lunch with them and made a presentation to them, very, very successful, and then did, did delivered awards for rural Arizona for the great things that they have been doing. Then we went over to NASET and saw the incubators, and I was able to see about, I think it was about 14 of the different kinds of uh, technology that they're doing over there, moving that forward, developing things, moving us in to the future, and uh, creating high-paying, uh, good jobs uh, for our people in Arizona that will go national with the cooperation of the entrepreneurship and NAU. It was fabulous, absolutely fabulous. And of course, I did a little radio, I did a little press, a little television, and so it's been a very, very productive uh, day. And then when I arrived here, there's a, a, conservative, a conservative advocacy group meeting across the way, so I bounced in there and said hello. And a lot of Valley people were in there, of course, because where do they go if they want good weather and good hospitality? Go north to Flagstaff, right? So they were having a grand time, and they're going to still be here um, tomorrow. And I look out, and I've seen people that I've known uh, for a long time here tonight, and then I see a lot of new, fresh faces, and I see a lot of young people. Mm -hmm. You are our future. You are our future. And we appreciate you so very, very much, you know. just. Keep the philosophy, keep the spine, and don't back down. We are not quitters yeah. in the Republican Party. Woo! You know, I became your governor a little bit over 600 days ago. I was faced with a deficit of uh, five high rolling years of spending, spending, spending. Times had been good. And, you know, they just bought in, and the governor bought in uh, to uh, new programs, new programs, spin, spin, spin. You know, it wasn't even raining. <laughs> and they spent the rainy day fund. I'm not, you know, that really tears my heart apart because we were in the same predicament at one time when I was in the legislature. We got the rainy day fund squared away, and we had to work really hard on it, and we had to make tough decisions. And then, because of good times, everybody thinks it's going to go on forever, and forever, and of course it didn't. So now, we again uh, are faced with deficit, and it hasn't been easy. But I will tell you that I went in there and I cut $2.2 billion out of the budget. You know, that's huge. That's larger than any other governor in the history of our state. And it was needed. All the while protecting public safety and education, which is very, very important. You know, we're in the economic uh, uh, doldrums that we're facing. It's important that we have economic development because the number one priority of Jam Brewers, of course, is to turn the economy around. And how do you turn the economy around? You produce jobs. Who produces jobs? It's not government. It's the private sector. And they want to hide. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and they want a, a, a high-skilled workforce, which that therefore means education. And that's what we have to do. We have to work with our community colleges, and we have to work with our higher education. But before that, we have to work with the lower system of education. So we did education reform from the third grade all the way up, or from the first grade all the way up. We said there will be no more social promotion. In the third grade, if you cannot read, you're not moving on to the fourth grade. You know? We're going to hold our schools accountable, and we're going to test their performance, and we're going to grade their schools, not with all the goobly gobbly labels that they want to put on these schools that nobody can understand. We're going to grade them just like they grade our children. We're going to grade them A, B, C, D, and F. Everybody understands that. Every parent understands that. And we're going to demand that they go, all schools go on and put grades and information. This, we're living in technology every day about their children. So you, mom, and you, dad, can go on and see what your child is doing at night. And if they're not doing so hot, 
It's not because they, the dog ate their homework, it's because you know, they didn't do their homework. Yeah. And you have that constant communication. And I believe that the teachers that inspire our children ought to be rewarded uh, for inspiring our, our, our children. That's where it's at. We need good teachers. So I got involved at the beginning because of education, because of my children. I went to a school board meeting. Whoever would have guessed that I would have ended up as uh, governor of the state of Arizona. That wasn't my goal. My goal, like many of you, is that you want to have a, a, a good lifestyle. You want government out of your life. You want to move on. And if you're a mom or a dad, you want your kids to have a good education and to be successful. So I went to a school board meeting and uh, with my husband because I was interested. And I sat there shocked. I said, John, who are those people? It's the school board. How did they get there? They got elected. By who? By the people in the district. And we only had two great schools. I was living in the county at the time, in the north part of Glendale today, and uh, I said, really? And so I started to get really involved in schools, in the school process, of belonging to the groups and participating and being the, the good mother that I wanted to be. And uh, finally, I said to my husband, I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to run for the school board. And he said, really? <laughs> I said, yes. I said, I think I can make a difference. He says, well, I think you, you can. But he says, you know, if I were you, I'd run for the legislature. He says, I think that you would make a difference in the legislature. I said, do you think I'm conservative enough? He said, absolutely. I said, are you sure? He said, oh, I'm sure. He said, I'm really sure. And so I said, let me think about that. A week later, he comes home. I'm sitting in the den. He walks through, and I'm sitting there young and fresh. Young, I like that. <laughs> and uh, I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to run for the legislature. He said, really? I said, yes. I said, will you support me? He said, of course. I said, no. I mean financially. Don't have to ask anybody for any money. And he said that he would. And I said, okay. And so he took me out, and he said, you need to do this, this, and this. I said, okay. And he says, you have to gather signatures. I said, oh, oh no. no. <laughs> I never, you know, I didn't think I was going to like that at all. And so he took me out to an A.J. Bayless grocery store, put me in the parking lot, and uh, went up and asked for questions. He's a little bit more political than I was at the time. And uh, he asked people, you know, that, you know, he was John Brewer and his wife was running for the legislature in District 19 at the time. And uh, would they, please, if they were registered Republicans, would they sign my petition? And people said, yes. I thought, wow, that's cool. And so <laughs> I thought, well, I'll give it a shot. And I walked up and I was, you know, a little bit cautious. And uh, I went up to the first person and they said, Yes. And I said, okay. And I asked the next one. They said, okay. And I thought, well, this is easy. <laughs> every day, every day, I would either walk in the neighborhood, my little tennis shoes, by myself, or at a grocery store, or at the fire department, at the post office, getting those signatures. And I really got wound up about it. And I was so, so excited. And when I won, oh. I was so disappointed because I want to know who those people were that didn't vote for me. I said, who are those people? You know? So you never know when you start off in politics where you're going to end up. I was innocent. I was innocent, you know, just trying to do what I believed was right. And I only mention all of that because as I look out at all of you, and particularly uh, the younger kids out here that are involved in politics at, at a young age, you will make such a huge difference in our future. You are our future, you know? The way our country is going, if we don't have you, we will not have a future, my friend. We will not have a future. So here I am today, again, uh, campaigning, talking to people, and fighting hard for Arizona. You know, we have been so successful since I have been governor in regards to getting Arizona turned around. Um, I came in with a plan. I was the only one with a plan. Currently, I'm still the only one with a plan, um, regardless of what rhetoric you might hear some places. But the fact of the matter is, is that I said that we need to turn the economy around. We need to bring jobs. And we cut the budget, like I said, $2.2 billion. We balanced the budget. We have brought in over... 
uh, 38 new companies into Arizona, over $2 billion in hard capital assets into Arizona, and over 7,000 new jobs into Arizona since yeah. I have been governor. Right. The very first thing that I did is I put a moratorium on all the rules and regulations so the businesses here Thank could you. flow and work and have predictability, and so that companies that we were looking to bring to Arizona would have that stability and that predictability, and it has worked out. And then I said to every one of my directors, we in government are not here to get in the way of the private enterprise system. We are in the business of helping people to cut through the red tape and the green tape. That's our job. That is what we're going to do, and it has been successful. That's why we were able to encourage those businesses to come here, and we have more to come. I mean, my goodness, Business Facilities Magazine has said that Arizona today is the king of solar. You know, I mean, that is our future. That's our greatest resource, <laughs> solar. And, and we, we have it under my leadership, and we're going to continue going that direction. And I said we need it, and I called for it. In 2009, tax reform. We have to have tax reform. We have, have to be competitive with California, Nevada, and Texas. It's as simple as that. And I call for it, or we're going to continue working in that direction. It has to be tax reform that we can afford. We cannot bankrupt the state, but we have got to do it. And I think that we need to reduce that corporate income tax, and I think we need to reduce that business personal property tax. Those are the things that people look at, and Arizona is extremely high. And from then, there we will keep working together. You know, we have uh, just about changed everything. Uh, you know, we changed the Department of Commerce, we changed the way education. Who would have ever thought in education that we would have had everybody around the table in order to come together to go and apply for Race to the Top. We had everybody from everywhere there, all wanting that same common goal. That has never happened in the history of the state. You know, I, and I was proud of that. And although we didn't win, we came in uh, pretty darn good, and then we said, Arizonans aren't quitters, we're gonna do it again. And we even got better. And we came in 19, 19. Now I will tell you, honestly, I think we should have came in probably one, two, or three. I think it was politics. I truly, truly do. Can we get the feeling people are picking on Arizona? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are, of course, as you all are aware, uh, a nation of laws. Uh, we have always believed that. And um, I'll talk a little bit about Senate Bill 1070 as that bill went through the legislature. Um, I knew it was going to be controversial. Um, of course it's going to be controversial because we knew how it was going to get spun, if you will, by the federal government and by, the, and by people here in Arizona. And so uh, we monitored it and we walked through uh, the legislature uh, watching it very, very carefully. And I made sure that we added our input into it. And I thought we had it all in line and everything was perfect. And uh, then the bill was sent up to me. And then we realized that we really needed to amend the bill um, because I was a little bit uncomfortable because I knew the first thing that anybody would say, even though we made absolutely sure that it mirrored federal law correctly and totally. That was our goal. And so we knew that. But I said, no, we're going to put another section in there that would prohibit any racial profiling. Make it perfectly clear. Well, hello, you know, I signed the bill, and what happens? The federal government goes berserk. I mean, absolutely berserk. The President of the United States, can you believe it? If you go to Phoenix and you're walking down the street licking an ice cream cone, you're gonna get thrown in jail, you know? Uh, Eric Holder says that it's racial profiling. Uh, you know, I mean, the highest elected uh, law enforcement officer in the state, and Homeland Security, Janet Napolitano. You know, she knows the issues that we're facing here. And then when they're asked, have you ever read the bill? Oh, I don't think so. And my little video goes, seriously? Seriously? And it was an outrage. It was an absolute outrage at murals federal law. So then, what do we hear on the news from Ecuador? <laughs> Hillary! Oh, we're going to sue Arizona! 
They let Ecuadorians know before they let us know that the United States is going to sue Arizona. I was aghast. I mean, it was just outrageous. It was horrible. And then I find out that not only they're going to sue Arizona, but they're going to sue Janice K. Brewer also. Oh, wow. So, you know, uh, it was like, oh, well, we're not going to stand for that. So we got ready for the battle. And we knew that our Attorney General, I mean, he testified against Senate Bill 1070, okay. loud and clear. And so he wasn't going to defend us. So we thought, well, what are we going to do? So, of course, you all are familiar. Uh, we got the legislature to send us legislation, which I signed, saying that I could hire my own legal counsel. And then I had to see how we were going to pay for it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so we, did, we developed the Legal Defense Fund. We have raised probably, I think the last number is between 3.8 and 3.9 million dollars. <laughs> in Arizona and from people from every state in our country, including Puerto Rico. And so, I mean, and, and Guam. So we're proud of that. And those donations came in in sums of 10 20 $30, some a little larger, some a lot larger, but the majority of them are probably around $25 contribution. The support for all of us in Arizona is so big, it's unbelievable. It is just so encouraging and it's like tonight when I came in with seeing all of you and all of your support and your encouragement we could not do it without that support and encouragement and we will fight to the end we will fight to the end and have you heard the recent good news yeah. <laughs> bad news or whatever you want to call it uh, you know that uh, the uh, President thinks that it's okay for Mexico and 11 Latin mm. countries to file a friend of the court spree against us in Arizona, yes. but uh, denies us the ability yeah. to file. Can you believe it? Oh, yeah. I mean, my gosh, it's just outrageous. It's outrageous. People in Arizona are, are, are it's internationalism run amok, as simple as that. And uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna put up with it, and uh, we will uh, continue moving in that direction. Uh, the appeals court, the Ninth Circuit, uh, will uh, uh, be lucky. Yeah, the Ninth, the Ninth Circuit will hear will will hear on uh, November the first. I will be there. Um, I, you know, I hope a lot of people will be there, and we understand that it's going to be on. Uh, they, the, the federal courts have determined for the first time that I can ever remember to allow C-SPAN to uh, uh, televise it, which is going to be interesting. So the American people, um, I don't know why he does that. Uh, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't seem like uh, something he would want the American people to see, <laughs> uh, the way they're behaving. But once we come out of there, if necessary, we have the will, we have the power, we have the force, we will go to the Supreme Court. Yeah. Yeah. I keep saying, we're not quitters in Arizona. <laughs> we are not quitters. We are not going to back down. And then we move on to Obama Health Care, you know, which we won yesterday in yeah. Florida. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> Another piece of legislation that the current AG said had no merit and that he wouldn't support, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I used my personal attorney on the ninth floor to join suit with the other county attorneys. So it's cost us maybe $5,000, but if we win, it will save us about $11 billion over the next 10 years. I mean, that... And we feel very comfortable that we're going to win that one. And I mean, they can say what they will, but they will not win that case. We have got to put a stop to what's happening at the federal level. Yes. It's, un it's out of control, unbelievable. And I know that you agree, and I know the majority of the people in Arizona agree, and we know that most of America agrees with Arizona. Yep. You know, in regards, we've got 22 states with health, and we've got 22 states that are going to introduce legislation very similar to our Senate Bill 1070. You think the president's going to sue um, 22 states? I don't think so. You know, they are after me. He doesn't like me. I know that. <laughs> but um, I'm not going to give up. It's just amazing, you know, this old gal from Phoenix, Arizona, and they look at national news, and they put his picture up, and they put my picture up, and I said, how in the world did that happen? <laughs> and uh, but I want you to 
know, I was proud of Arizona. I was proud of what we stand for. And when I had the opportunity to meet with him in Washington, D.C., I went in there, and it was like a, a odd... It wasn't my first rodeo, first and foremost, at the, at the, at the White House. I'd been there several times with some really great presidents. Um, <laughs> We sat down and we chatted and he told me what he thought and I was very clear, crystal clear, my friends, uh, what I thought and we didn't agree. You know, it was as simple as that. And we were talking about security of the border and we were talking about Senate Bill 1070 and I thought, okay, this is my opportunity. Parting shot, a parting, parting shot, I said to him, I said, Mr. President, I said, what are we going to do about this Obamacare? We can't sustain it. We can't afford it. You know, we need flexibility. What do you mean flexibility? We have to do something. We need flexibility on that health care. We can't afford it. And I said, we are the most generous state in the country in regards to our Medicaid program. We, you know, we already pay 100% of FPL. We already pay 133% of FPL. And we do not have the money. We will go bankrupt if we're not already bankrupt. He says, well, he said, we're going to pursue it. Just like that. Well, we're going to Okay, okay, you are the president after all. But you know what he's done? He has woke up America. Yeah! Woke up America. This is the time that we can have a sea change. Absolutely clear. Absolutely clear. The possibility of bringing, of winning Congress and the Senate and winning more offices here in the state of Arizona, including all the statewide offices, is very apparent. We had a poll that was presented yesterday um, by uh, uh, reliable sources, real pollsters, with all the tabs and cross-sections, <laughs> and I am leading by 17 points. <laughs> Why candidate is leading by eight or nine or ten points. We are going to take this like a steamroller. <laughs> but, but it is important because we have about 17 and a half more days till election that we don't give up, slow down, and, and think that we have it in the bag. We have to keep talking. We have to keep wearing those brewer shirts and those brewer buttons. And we have to tell our friends and we've got to be sure that everybody gets out to vote. And that's what it's all about. And Paul Gosar, he is good. He's a terrific guy. I thought maybe he'd be here tonight. I thought maybe he might be. We need to get him elected. We absolutely need to get him elected. I need a Republican. You said that, that Tom Horton is going to be here. I need a Republican AG to work yeah. with me. And for Secretary Bennett, Doug Ducey, uh, and John Hoopenthal. We need them all. We are a team. We are a team, and we did a unity flight, and we were well received, and we're moving, and we're grooving, and we're out there, and we're going to get the job done. I want to continue to lead Arizona's comeback. It has begun, but we need to finish it and clean up the job and fight for Arizona and get our borders secured and win this beloved country back. I love America. I know you love America. And it just makes my heart swell to stand here in front of all of you knowing that you agree with the same philosophy that I agree with. And now is the time, my friends. Now is the time. So let's get up. Let's get out there. Let's get our message. And let's take back America. Yeah. Thank you, dear. The governor has agreed to take about 15 minutes with the question. I don't know 15 if you're hard. <laughs> if they're hard, you got to talk to me. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then she has to get back. Uh, who knows where she is tomorrow? I know she's going to have to go to Prescott. One staff is going to Tucson. The other one's going to the moon. And I don't know where she is. So, so questions, please. But no speeches. Questions. Yes, sir. I just don't want to forget about Obama and all that garbage. How can... 
states, or countries out of our United States border have standing with the ninth. It is outrageous. It's it. absolutely outrageous. I mean, they're going to charge us with human rights. Countries like Cuba, Nicaragua, <laughs> Libya. <laughs> It's insane. It is absolutely insane on both issues, health care and and a Senate Bill 1070. How stupid! It is can stupid. It get? The, the American people are upset. Yes. Oh, yeah. Question. It's really wonderful to see you, Governor. Brewer. Thank you. It's good to see you. I have a kind of a local issue, and I don't know if you know anything about it, but the uh, three state colleges are funded by taxpayer dollars, yet each three of them. The vendorship of the banks are from the North the Eastern uh, New York banks that handle the vendorship. And they're sucking millions of dollars out of the state and sending it up there. Why isn't Arizona State Credit Union, which is our state bank, why don't they have the vendorships for the uh, three universities? I don't know if you were aware of that. I don't know. We, we need to keep our money here. There must be, I, I, you know, there might be a reason. You, you might ask Tom Horn tomorrow to be superintendent of public instruction. I'll be walking the precinct trying to get people to vote for you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> we'll look, go take notes and we'll get, we'll find that out. Somebody want to take that down? Your lady over there. Yeah, Judy? absolutely. First of all, thank you so much for all the effort you have put out thank for us. You. I really appreciate it. One of the things that's been uppermost in my mind since I saw Ken Bennett's presentation on the budget a couple years ago was, what can we do to prevent the runaway spending that has brought us to where we're at now going forward? Well, well you're absolutely, that's something we should all be concerned about. We need budget reform. We need to have restraints. We need to be able to say we're going to have a rainy day fund and have it spelled out specifically why and how that money can be used. We can't do everything for everybody. It's impossible. We have to have restraints on the budget. And uh, until we elect and get people um, that buy into that philosophy, it's going to be very, very difficult. Uh, because it, it has been cyclical. When I first went into the legislature, we were faced with a similar problem. And then, you know, 10 years later, it was the same problem all over again. People like to spend. We can't keep spending. It's not our job. And we just have to get, you know, we have to get hold on it. But if we can get implementation, and then we need to find uh, a better way uh, to be able to project revenues. Exactly. That exactly. is a key because yeah. I believe we probably need three different sources mm -hmm. and do a blend of those projections because we all know if you're only going to one place, you're uh, that can be jig and rig. We yeah. know. I mean, we can look at JLBC, which is the Joint <laughs> Legislative Budget Committee, and, you know, somebody from leadership goes over there and says, well, you know, we can't get this done. We need to have it up a little bit. So just kind of move the projection. I'm not saying they're doing anything illegal. It's all based on projection. But we need to be able to say from three different sources, this is what the projections are. And we know it's always fluid. It's no different than your budget. You know, if you make a budget and the refrigeration goes out or the baby gets sick or the car breaks down and you didn't plan for it, well, then you have to adjust someplace else. But uh, uh, we do. We have to have budget reform. We have to. We absolutely have to. And we can do it. If we do what is needed to be done, we can do it in the next four years. Good. Won't be easy. Good. And, you know, everybody's got their sacred cow. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got 90 people in the legislature, mm -hmm. and everybody's got a sacred cow. But you know what? Yeah. Doing the right thing generally means what? Doing the hard, hard thing. thing. Mm -hmm. And we need to do some hard things yeah. in Arizona. Absolutely. Question back here? Yeah. yeah. As you move on in November as governor, in the long run, it's a, I know it's a long-term thing, but is there any way we can hold universities more accountable? For, yeah. for the, getting them back to teaching the things they're supposed to teach. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Phenomenal. My yeah. daughter put up with it for four years. She wrote about it. She was on radio programs about it. it it's so tough for these kids. Mm -hmm. and I don't know if there's anything we can do just to make them get back to teaching what they're supposed to well, teach. Well, I have been ideas on that. I have been working really uh, uh, 
hard with the universities and with the Board of Regents and uh, with the university presidents because, you know, we have to have a partnership with them because we know, again, going back to the jobs, that people like certain things with the universities. That's why they come here because of the research and et cetera, et cetera. But our main goal is getting these students educated and holding them accountable. And these kids need predictability as far as when they start uh, into their classes, that they should know what their tuition is going to be in order to get that, that certain degree. They shouldn't have to know that each year it's going to increase, increase, increase. And so uh, when my first visit to the Board of Regents um, was that message very loud and very strong. And I believe that the university, everybody doesn't have to go uh, to uh, a research university. Uh, that, you know, everybody doesn't care whether you have a great, big, fabulous football team. I mean, it, it's not that important. I would believe what, like any of you has did with Yavapai Community College after my directions to them, to allow them to co-opt, to go together and to work so that they can take their, uh, their, their uh, classes at Yavapai County and end up with their four-year degree. That's, that's, that's a way of really cutting costs and getting the job done and making it more affordable and more predictable. And we will continue uh, to do that. But we know that there's been announcements um, uh, that uh, tuition is probably going to rise again according to the regents. And, you know, and the classes are too big, um, you know. Uh, and, and yeah, 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 you know, and I don't know how you fix that. But the bottom line is, is that we got to get good people appointed to the Board of Regents, so we have some really, really great oversight on it, and make them accountable. And the legislature has to make them accountable also. They, they, they are the appropriators. They are the appropriators. And uh, uh, we have begun that uh, journey uh, with the universities, and we will continue. Um, you know, I've been there two years. Uh, we've made uh, some pretty big changes uh, as far as their operations. Uh, we can't uh, um, uh, do uh, uh, it overnight. Uh, you just can't turn that big train around that quickly. I, I, you know, I'll be honest with you, I'm a truth teller, but I think that we have a good start and that we will make them much more accountable, much more predictable, and much more affordable uh, for everybody. Um, it, uh, it's out of control. It, it is out of control. Good question. Uh oh, these are the tough ones. <laughs> Get here, Clark. <laughs> well, okay, You're doing the calling. <laughs> Governor Brew, first of all, thank you for your passion and love to save this country. I am thankful. Mine's simple. Um, as a young conservative going to college, what is a specific piece of advice that you would give us? to almost help reach out to other students and open their eyes to see what's happening because I feel like with their eyes closed and blind, they're not going to see what's going to happen in this country within the next year or even five years. You know, you have to, to stand your ground and you can't give them an inch because they'll take a mile. It's interesting, even uh, when my youngest son was at, at, at the university, it was he would say, you know, it, it's really hard in, in the academic environment because you have to take certain classes and you've got really liberal sometimes professors that are just, you're thinking, what are they talking about? And you know you have to deliver on the dime, so you almost have to accommodate them if you want a grade. And all the time he would say things like, you know, it just makes me sick. And, you know, but he had to keep his grade point up to 4.3 grade for him. Um, so he wasn't going to get, you know, rid of that. And so, but I will tell you, he held, and it's hard to be a conservative, and sometimes I think it's even harder being a conservative uh, male uh, in the university system. But you hold your line and you just keep talking about your philosophy and the basic things and what's bad about socialism and, 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 and the liberal left. And today, people that he went to college with, uh, girls and boys, that he, and, it, and it happened to him in law school too, it was even worse in law school, but they came and they said, you know, Michael, you were right, because as they get older, they get smarter, you know. Um, I'll tell you a little story. I was down in Yuma at a uh, restaurant. It's called Cretans, a Mexican restaurant down there. And uh, they uh, gave me a menu, and uh, I looked at it, and it said that they had a, a Republican special. I thought, this is really cool. You know, it was a chimichanga and rice and beans, you know, for $5.99. I thought, that's great. And right below it, they had uh, the Democrat special. And it was 
Um, the same thing. He said, <laughs> exactly the same thing, except you pay for it, we'll give it to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed and I, of course, ordered the Republican one. Well, I it, you know? But I thought, boy, that tells a story. That really tells a story. You just have to keep saying it over and over and don't give up because if you give up, we will not have an America. We will not have America. And there are so many great role models out there today because the conservatives are fired up. We're awake. Yeah, we're awake. <laughs> Um, I was going to ask, when you're done fixing Arizona, will you come to California? Oh, wow. Can you believe what he did to me oh. on the Board of, uh, board of oh. Governors thing? No. Uh, conference. I, I, I come from Southern California. Yeah, and I see it all the time. So. No, they boycotted Arizona. I was supposed to host, host the Board of Governors meeting, and I, I said I would host it. We were ready to go. Mexico governors boycotted it. Rick Perry in New Mexico says, "Well, I'll host it. I'll host it." Oh, what did I say? Rick Perry. Oh, not Rick Perry. He's a good guy. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, Rick. Richardson. Yeah. And so then he calls up Arnold, uh, this is after I talked to Arnold on the telephone, and he says, uh, oh, I'll come, I'll, I'll, I'll come to New Mexico, oh, oh, oh. hanging out, joining in with the boycott of Arizona. I mean, that's wrong. Yeah. That's just absolutely wrong. One more. One more. Anybody? Right there. Back here. Back here. This oh. gal. Oh. Oh. oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. I just wanted to publicly thank you, Governor Brewer, because you appointed me to be a judge. And I want you to know that I'm having a hard time standing here because I have been walking the streets for the last three weeks, and I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate what you've done for me and for our state. Well, thank you very much. Judge Hatch, and you vote yeah. for him. Yeah. Thank you all very, very much. Keep working. Sweet <laughs> victory, November 2nd. Yeah.
we were in crisis, we knew. Yeah. We got it turned around. Yeah, but we got it turned around. I did. Oh, sure. Thank you. 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 Thank you.